Pawn shops are some of the most interesting places on this earth. Now, I've only been to a few, but you see them in TV shows, you see them in movies. In person, I feel like they're so much different. I'm not convinced that there's not a mob boss running each individual pawn operation. It's like some Team Rocket stuff. But today, we are going to be hitting up a few different pawn shops. We're going to be doing a pawn shop fishing challenge. Where are they at, if any? I got to figure that out first. We are going to get in the trenches. We're going to infiltrate these pawn shops, and we're going to be looking for fishing gear. Do these Delaware pawn shops or just pawn shops in general have fishing gear normally? Like, is that like a thing? Is it cool rare stuff? Is it cheeks? The possibilities are endless. But yeah, I don't even know really if this is going to work or not, but hopefully we find some fishing gear. And then we're going to take it to the water, try to catch some fish on it. Now, I did a pawn shop fishing video years ago. I'll link that down in the description below. That was many moons ago. I haven't even peeked in a pawn shop since then. So uh, yeah, I'm going to look and try to find our first one. Let's get over there. Let's get this pawn shopping started. There's a potential to find some really cool stuff. All right, y'all, we made it over here to the first pawn shop. Let me know in the comments below, like, do you guys ever venture to your local pawn shop? I feel like I'm gonna walk in there. They're gonna be like, what the heck, somebody's here? On top of that, I think pawn shops are probably like the weirdest place to film, especially like by yourself. If we get kicked out, we get kicked out. I probably won't be talking all too loud, but uh, yeah, hopefully they have something. Like, I don't know what's in pawn shops. So this is essentially a budget fishing challenge, man. Another installment to V2 season two. Basically, I have like $50 cash in my pocket. I don't know if these places take like credit cards. I don't know why I'm a little nervous let's get in here if you guys do enjoy these videos please make sure to go down there smack that thumbs up button and also if you do enjoy the videos but you're not yet already make sure to go down there hit that subscribe button that dude is staring is this place even open is this open i don't even know no hello thank you man pawn shop number two this one looks interesting all right Yeah, we take gift cards. Right, mm -hmm. Oh, a gift card? And you take gift cards. Mm -hmm. Everybody makes mistakes, how you fish mistakes. They said 14. Alright, so right away, as y'all saw, we stumbled into the fishing section of the pawn shop. Now, they actually had a pretty decent amount of, like, mixture of rods, reels, lures. And, I mean, as you guys can see, there's just a bunch of random stuff everywhere. Like, they have a stop sign sitting there. These stores, I mean, usually you really don't know what you can find in here. Like, you literally find anything, man. They have themselves a whole wall of Rapala lures and a couple other different things. It looks like they got like a lot of their stuff like gear wise from Ollie's. Ollie's is a bargain outlet store. I've actually done a couple videos. I'll leave those down in the description below. But it looks like they get some stuff from there and then try to sell it more at this place. I'm not even gonna lie, man. Some of these prices, like they had a Doc Demon for $35. I'm pretty sure I looked it up and that's like a $15. It was like the deluxe Doc Demon, but I'm pretty sure it's like not worth $35. And a couple other rods and reels and stuff, were, it's just like way too expensive than it actually should be. So we looked around here for a little while. We ended up getting a reel that really intrigued me. There you go. Nice, man. How are we going? All right. So it has been an interesting day. You guys aren't gonna see this, but we went to a few other uh, pawn shops and it was there, there was just nothing. But at that first shop, we did get something that's actually pretty freaking cool. Or at least I think it's cool. This is something that you can't really go to a normal tackle shop and just pick this up. I'm gonna tell you guys why this is a pretty cool find here. But first, we're actually over here at Walmart. We gotta get some stuff. And we've been pawn shopping too hard, man. The sun is kind of like on its way down ish. So we gotta get in here, get out really quick. We have the possibility of catching some pretty big fish. First, we gotta get some bait over here in this aisle. This is like the biggest freaking can of corn I have ever seen. Again, pro tip, if you're gonna be fishing with corn, make sure you don't get the, uh, yeah, make sure you get these ones. Okay, when did marshmallows start becoming like, look at this real quick. Sour Patch Marshmallows? Banana marshmallows? Oh my god, lucky charms. I'm very intrigued by the Sour Patch ones. Let me know if you've ever tried those down in the comment section below. Ooh. Fishing section all to ourselves. So if you guys have been watching the channel recently, we've been doing a lot of catfishing and a lot of carp fishing. Especially last video, we went to Cabela's. They had a giant catfish and carp section. We had a lot of fun, but I've never actually tried to see if they have like a catfish and carp kind of section or if they have like anything for that. All right, so as far as catfish goes, we have this thing that I used and this did not catch as literally anything. There's a collapsible worm uh, pen. You keep your worms in there? That's kind of interesting. Trout assortment. What does that even come with? Does it say? It's like a bunch of random sized hooks. All right, yeah, no, yeah. It doesn't seem like they have like a big catfish and carp section here. Nowhere near, I mean, obviously as big as Cabela's. That was freaking insane. They do have though some chum. Saltwater fish chum. I don't know if you have any like kits. 
Any kits? All right, so not really much in that department. I do need to grab those. So you guys know these like little rod holder thingies I've been using? These ones are real tiny. I think I left them in the ground. So these are red, the ones that I had. And uh, I guess the grass is green. I think me being colorblind, I didn't see them when I went to leave. They were just in the grass. So rip to those. These are 276. I don't know if that's gonna fit my rods. All right, we'll get to test them out. I'm also tired of using nail clippers. Well, I'm tired of losing my pliers, but we need to grab some of these maybe? Mm, seven bucks, yeah, these should work. I don't think I actually said this yet, but I think the fish that we're gonna be targeting, like the reel that we got is actually made for. You guys will see what I'm talking about here in a second. Let's get the heck out of here. Ooh, that Annie Ann smelled so good on the way out. I don't know what's been going on. The past two times I've been like at the self checkout. There's some like weird stuff. This time the lady, like I had my camera sitting there. She was just pointing at it. She was like, -da -da. she just kept like saying it. I was like, what? <laughs> This is the reel that we picked up here from the pawn shop. This right here is a Silstar RBX 50M bait feeder. I was kind of looking at this in the pawn shop. I was like, that looks pretty interesting. I haven't really heard of that brand before. Apparently this is an EU brand. Like this is made over in the European land. On there, it was listed $20. We did a little bit of haggling. I actually didn't haggle at all. He just like haggled himself down. He made it 15. I'm not gonna lie, man. This thing is pretty freaking cool for $15. And I believe, like, I don't know, but I know carp fishing over there in Europe is really big. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys know, but I have a feeling that this was made for carp fishing. I don't know if y'all can see that over there. It's a bait feeder, basically a bait runner. That's a switch here in the back that actually activates the drag i've had a few reels like this but i've never actually used one like what they're intended to use them for so today we came over here to this pond we are running out of a little bit of daylight i think it should be good though this should be like a good time fish might be feeding we had some success recently carp fishing if you guys haven't seen that video i'll link it up here or i'll put it up here and i'll link it down in the description below i had so much fun between that and the catfishing we kind of been doing recently I'm still like pretty dude all this stuff but yeah we came back here to this spot there are some big fish in here my big objective like i want to catch a fish on this reel here's a quick closer look at this thing i really like like look at that wooden handle right there this thing is freaking sweet we've got the titanium bait feeder system and i don't even know if you guys can see that probably not but there's like japanese writing i believe it's japanese where is it see right there let's get this thing rigged up here let's see what we can do i think this is gonna be the perfect time man let's crack this dude open real quick i don't know why i've been losing so many how do you even open this like i just been on a losing spree man my rod holders my pliers that's like three pairs of pliers in the past like month like the past 30 days <laughs> how the heck do you over these things dude? i feel like overall i've just been so scatterbrained with like the big move we're doing and everything that's going on right now hello i need like pliers to open the pliers all right we got in i was like two seconds away from going straight king kong just smashing into it all right oh, there we go hello those pliers uh like the cutting part like they cannot even cut my four pound test dude oh that sounds actually pretty good the nice thing about this reel is that it came pre-lined definitely feels monofilamenty. just think about happy this reel is going to be man he was lonely in a pawn shop cold nights barren days now he's gonna be catching some freaking giants all right so we got that on there we're literally just doing a split shot rig to a hook i'll, I'll show you guys the rigs everything in a second hold on i'm getting too distracted here i gotta focus up we gotta get over to this spot real quick oh all right the shopping cart pond oh geez ow it's like national thornland over here this is the uh yeah this is the good old shopping cart pond all right so carp fishing we got this little baby can of corn i didn't realize it was like a smaller one we're gonna crack her open so much easier than smash the other one with a rock literally how many times have i smashed corn cans with rocks pour one out for the uk fishing gods all right so all we're gonna do man ah just get like you know not too much get some in the water a little scent going around oh gosh all right, this is a super simple rig i showed you guys we got a split shot going down to i believe that's a size four hook hopefully that works i mean i've used bigger hooks i've used way smaller hooks i mean last time we were catching them on like a size 12 it's like what i would go trout fishing with i really just want to catch one on the pawn shop reel all right we're just gonna load this whole hook up <sighs> all right y'all first cast the debut of the pawn shop reel okay why is it we're a little crooked here I feel like maybe it's supposed to be like that. You guys see that? Maybe that's like a UK thing. Let's see if we can cast this out. All right, we might need to redo that. This is some stale, stiff monofilament. Oh, we're squeaking. <laughs> this reel has, might have seen better days. All right, that's actually not bad. I do appreciate the fact that these are like obnoxious. Like, I don't think I'm gonna forget these. They are definitely smaller though, so. Not gonna keep the rod as out of the ground. Oh, dude, my tip like barely fits. All right, and we flip this up, so that basically just has no drag. And just if, it, if something hits that, it's just gonna, bzzz, and then we flip it and then set the hook and reel in. 
giant magic card. I see some bubbling out there, so that might be a really good sign. All right, let's get this other one in. I kind of don't want to throw the other one in, just so that we could definitely, like, if anything hits, it hits on the pawn shop reel. At the same time, like, I don't know. We're fishing, dude. We're, we're gonna throw it out. So this one is a little bit different as a setup. We have like this slip sinker setup, and uh, it goes to a little snap swivel right here. It goes down to leader. That goes down to another hook. I'm gonna load this dude up with some corn. If you guys have ever been to a pawn shop though, like going for fishing gear, have you guys ever found anything cool? I feel like it's like hit or miss, but definitely could be some treasure. The not so treasure stuff, like just kind of your normal typical stuff was kind of it was overpriced man i'm not gonna lie like i don't know maybe that's a strat for them and you're supposed to haggle them down some of that crap was expensive all right that's out pretty dang far these little rod holder things might be meant for kitty rods dude. <laughs> Could barely fit the tip all right we got both rods out what thing different i actually did look at this man excuse me sir came prepared if we do catch any fish which hopefully there's some big ones, we'll land them nice properly and uh, not get them injured or me injured in the process so uh yeah everything is looking fantastic just gotta wait for that bite man again if you guys do carfish let me know like any improvements i can make to what i'm doing or if i'm doing something completely wrong i'm still pretty new to this stuff there are some like more advanced techniques might throw a little bit more chum out i just don't really know the patterns of these fish in the winter the good thing is though like why i feel pretty good about this is that the past couple days have been so nice like it's been like 40s 50s that might not seem like you know super warm compared to what we had i mean mother nature was on something man the wind was just insane for like weeks it was straight like high of 30s with like the gray skies the sky is actually blue today that's a happy sign man that's nice to see did i just see this rod to the left move all right, we just recasted. I like the spot that it's in. I think one of the coolest things about like getting secondhand gear from, you know, wherever you get it, thrift store, pawn shop, it like has a story, you know? Like I wonder whose reel it was, what kind of fish were caught on it, how many owners this had, the rough times it's been through. I mean, these things, like each individual piece of fishing gear over years and years and years, you know, it has its own story. Now it's with us and it's on YouTube. It's the circle of life, you know? That's kind of moving. Okay. It is getting really darkish. Hello? Flip that. We got something messing with us? I've been seeing so many bubbles. Which usually means that the carp are feeding on the bottom. See, like, yeah, something is messing with that. Come here, boy. Oh. Got him. Got him. On the reel. On the reel. <laughs> Drag still works. It sounds like it at least. Okay. Oh my gosh, dude. It is like so close to being dark now. <laughs> oh, something was messing with it. And I was like, is that? Come here, come here, come here. Dude, this thing is putting up a freaking fight, dude. For one thing, uh, this real, oh gosh, the drag works. Ooh, dude, I'm so freaking happy right now. We made it work. Oh. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chill, chill, chill. Oh, let's go, let's go, dude. Oh my gosh, like literally right at dark. Holy crap, that is a fatty. Thank you so much, buddy. <sighs> All right, guys, I don't, again, this is not the best lighting. Let me take him back out of the water here real quick. Let's get a little phone light going. Okay, that is the beauty of the day right there. Look how freaking plump, dude. That is a fat, juicy boy or girl. I'm not exactly sure. Is there a way to tell the difference between male and female carp? When my hands are wet, I did just put them in the water. Let's gently pick this dude up. <laughs> there we go, man. Pawn shop fishing challenge. Beautiful, look at that, man. He just sucked that corn right up. Beautiful fish. The more I fish for these dudes, the more I really like fishing for these dudes. So much fun, man. Like, put up such a good fight, too. This fish, ow, that's a thorn. This fish feels like a freaking popsicle. Let's get a nice little whew, right back in the water. Oh my gosh. By the way, this water is freaking, oh, that's freaking cold, dude. 
right before like that is the definition of buzzer beater right there if you have not already make sure to go down there hit the thumbs up button that is what i'm talking about dude hey man again if you enjoyed this video please make sure to go down there hit that thumbs up button and if you are not already make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified for future videos there's just been so much going on i'm so happy that we got to get out there catch a freaking fish really cool stuff coming all the way dude just stay tuned all i gotta say man is let's keep their soul and thank you guys for watching see you next video you wanna know just where